people running everywhere, no one knows what's going on, and then you have that one idiot who decided he was gonna drive the car outside to basically save everyone. So it was, uh, it was mid-2007, and at the time I was doing uh, infotainment development. So I was working as an engineer with, with BMW. Essentially, anything to do with satellite radio, more, more specifically. You know, fun fact, guys, that stuff can't get developed overseas. It can't get developed in Germany because satellite radio only exists here. It's only here in the U.S. So we get a phone call from the port, and these guys are panicking. They want to know if something changed with the car or if the engineers in Germany were putting something in cars. We come to find out that they thought there was a bomb in the car. So this was when the, three, the 2007 brand new 3 Series had just come out. So you can imagine there was a little bit of confusion. We show up and essentially we could see boats in the distance. They're, they're, they're blocking the river. We, could, we start hearing helicopters in the distance and there's a bomb squad, straight up bomb squad, and a SWAT team sitting in front of the port. Now, you have to realize too, these are extremely secure locations. It's the same level that TSA people get when you get, it's, it's called a, things called a TIC check or something like that that you get. So in order to work there, you're ready at a very high level. And then when people come in there, they get checked like crazy. I mean, I hate to tell you, but a, a port visit would be a little tough, right? If you're, if you're not working there. So this is, this is what we see. And basically everything is stopped. Now ports are like, they're like a factory, especially with the port install program and things like that. It is like a factory of what's going on. So no one stops. So it's basically like stopping the line at the factory. People running everywhere, no one knows what's going on, and then you have that one idiot who decided he was gonna drive the car outside to basically save everyone. So we open the door and we're looking at it. Now, mind you, we're like, we're distanced, right? So it really was like a movie, right? We're like opening the door and we're standing away from it and we're looking inside and there's a flower pot sitting in the cup holder. This was after 9-11 happened, right? So everything was a little different. In the meantime, somebody had the bright idea to call marketing right? Because we had a special department that just did European delivery because we came to find out this car was in fact a European delivery car. So the customer had driven this car through Germany, through Austria, and they definitely drove it through Austria because what I'm about to tell you. And we come to find out that the customer did it. And what it was, was essentially they were having problems with their radio reception and the customer's son was an engineer and he rigged this thing up. He put concrete in a pot, put a wire in it and rigged it up to the back of the radio to get better reception. He was having trouble with FM reception, which actually makes sense. So he was in Austria. So if you're up, up in the mountains, it's, it's gonna happen. People think you're up higher, so you get more reception. It has nothing to do with anything. Uh, it's about all the antennas that are around and things like that. So if you essentially put a wire in the back of where the antenna for the car is supposed to go into, in this instance, concrete, it actually boosts the antenna. So that's essentially what they were trying to do. I'd love to know where they got a flower pot, concrete, wire, and then how this guy was good enough to pop the radio uh, in the middle of God knows where. But someone was an engineer, so I guess that makes sense. So around that time, European delivery was, was the hot thing to do, you know, for obvious reasons. And guys, you know, um, a little, little pro tip for you guys, if you guys are struggling to get an allocation, see if you can work with the special vehicles group because then you could potentially get European delivery. You'll save money on tax just because of the way that works. I love the idea actually, because you can get a free trip out of it. You know, the money you save on tax, you get to, you get to go to Europe. So at the time, that was definitely the thing to do, especially on a new three series. So once it was resolved, it was like, it was like night and day, man. It was like lightning struck, right? It was, it was done, it was over with. Everybody just got back to what they were doing um, and, and that was it. I think the most complicated thing was to figure out how the hell we were gonna get this flower pot out of the car. Basically, I, I ended up at the port if there was a problem. So uh, let's say we'd add a new accessory to the, the port installation program became a monster of its own, right? Like this huge thing. So if we add something new uh, to the port program, uh, we'd actually go down there and just kind of evaluate how it was being installed. We'd go a lot for like quality issues. So let's say the stickers weren't being, there was a lot of stickers that happened, right? all those stripes and stuff. That was all locally done um, by a guy actually in New Jersey who was making the stickers, for, believe it or not. Um, so that was being done. So sometimes there'd be a problem with it where it wasn't stretching right, whatever it was. So the product manager would go down there to physically look at it so then they could talk to the vendor because the vendor was not allowed at the port. So being that that person worked for me, I used to go down all the time for that kind of stuff. We also used to do secret launches of cars there with uh, regional staff. So before stuff came out, we, we talked to them there because the cars were in a secure location to port. So there's a lot of cool stuff at ports.
that don't even make it to the engineering center sometimes because it's a secured location. You know exactly who's walking in there because even at headquarters, right? You could bring a family member or something if you want, right? No one's going to care, but there you can't. So that's, that's why they'd keep a lot of stuff down at the port. And that's all that was. They completely shut down the port for basically two days. Uh, ATF was called, <laughs> like, it was, a, it was a complete disaster, complete disaster. We'd like to thank Patrick Adair Designs for their support of the VinWiki channel this month. Patrick and his team make some of the most amazing rings out of the most exotic materials on earth. They make rings out of superconductors and meteorites and stardust and all the things that you can imagine, including old parts from broken exotic cars. They've got over 20,000 customers and Patrick decided to document his journey and the ways that he makes his rings and the cars that he enjoys on his own YouTube channel. So he's part of our YouTube family. He's coming by to tell some stories soon, but check him out at the link in the description below and use the code VINWIKI for a 15% discount. Thank them for their support of the channel and find you an awesome ring.